Now, our concern is the following. Let's consider a particle, OK? And around these particles, in the neighborhood, in the infinitesimal neighborhood, we consider two other particles. The particle P is the original one, and then we consider the particle Q and the particle R, both in the infinitesimal neighborhood of P. OK, they have a, a, a specific orientation. Let's call T1 the unit vector defining the orientation PQ, PQ. And let's call T2 the unit vector defining the orientation PR. OK, <coughs> these two vectors define an angle. So that, somehow, is the angle that is formed by the two particles at the reference configuration. This angle, it's termed here capital theta. And this square with this dot inside is the way of representing the capital Greek letter theta. OK, this is at the, curve, at the reference configuration, at the reference time. What happens with that particles after the motion, after the deformation, at a certain specific time that we are interested in, which is called the reference time t? Well, particle p moves to the spatial position p prime. Particle q moves to the spatial position q prime. And particle r moves to the, to the spatial position r prime. Of course, the distances pq and pr are not the same. We know already that. But of course, by the same reason, we cannot ensure that the angle that is formed by pq, now defined by the unit direction, small t1, and pr, now defined by the small unit vector t2, this angle is no longer the same. So it, ch it has changed. Where is this information? Can we compute this information? Maybe we are interested in that. Where is this information? In what of the tensor that we have derived so far? And what of them is that information? Well, let's do some operations again. Very simple algebra operations. Say, so for instance, if I wanted to involve this angle in an operation, let's compute the product of these two differential of x1, which is this vector, pq, p, p prime, pbi, times the dot product, the scalar product, p prime, r prime. So this is differential of x1, differential of x2, which is, by the way, by the formula of the dot product of two vectors, this is the modulus of differential of x1 times the model of differential of x2 times the cosinus of the angle theta. So now, this formula involves the angle that I want to compute. By the way, differential of x1 is differential of x1. The modulus of, of the vector differential of x1 is differential of x1, and the modulus of differential of x2 is differential of x2. Okay? So from one side, I have this operation. From one side, I have more, more information. For instance, I know that there is a direct relation of the length of the vectors, the relative positions of particles of positions q prime, p prime, r prime, p prime, in terms of the vectors t1, differential of s1, t2, differential of s2, and the same at the reference configuration. So this is the geometric identity. OK, so let's just start with that formula, and let's operate a little bit with some formulas that we derived before. Specifically, what know about differential of x1 and differential of capital X1? Well, they are related in terms of the basic uh, formula for the formation that they are precisely related by the tensor, the first entity we define, which is the deformation gradient tensor. So these formulas are really derived. F is a vector, is a tensor, that multiplied by any vector at the reference configuration provides the relative position of the particles at the present configuration. OK, so let's replace that equation into here. Let's replace that same equation transposed into here. And let's do the operation. I do the operation, then the transposed of the product is the first transposed, or the first times the second transposed, times that. So finally, we arrive to this equation. We just see that this f transpose times f. And again, using the formula that defines e that we derived before, just by replacing, we obtain this formula here. That product can be expressed as differential of x1 
times 2 e plus 1 times differential of x2, which is here. Again, we replace now differential of x1 times t1 differential of s1 in here, in here, with some operations. Blah, 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 blah. And <coughs> we also see that the length differential of s1, the length of this segment, is related to the length of this segment through something of magnitude that we already derived, which is the stretch. So finally, we replace differential of s1 as differential of small s1 divided by the stretch in direction 1, differential of s2, etc., etc. There's some operations. I mean, I think you can do that yourself. I'm maybe extending too much my explanation. Finally, just by algebra, I obtain that the original product, differential of s1, differential of s2, cosinus of theta, can be expressed in that way, where lambda 1 and lambda 2 can be expressed in terms of what we saw before by means of this formula. So finally, finally, after this algebra, we obtain the following. Just by cancelling differential of S1, differential of S2 here, we see that cosinus of theta is all that, which instead, uh, in turn, is all this. So finally, we obtain this formula. Anyway, we see that effectively, even this formula could look more or less complicated, it's telling us something that is important. I was interested in computing that angle, okay? And now I have a way to compute it. Because if I know where, what, what were the angle or the, or the, the original relative positions of vector T1 related to this particle and vector T2 defined in this related to this particle, if I know T1 and T2, and I know also the material strain tensor, capital E, now I have a formula that tells me what is the final angle of these two particles. So information is there. It's not trivial, maybe, it's not so trivial, but it can be computed. I can do this operation. I know E, the value of capital E at a certain <coughs> particle. I know two directions, T1, T2, and I wanted not the original angle between two directions, but the final after the formation, that's the formula. You see? So, interesting. Where is the information of these angles? For every direction, because this can be done for any two directions. Where is the information? In here. In here. So again, I can say that the strain tensor, the material strain tensor in this case, contains information not, on, not only on the variations of the distances, but also on the variations of the angle. A similar derivation can be done for the, the other way. Imagine that now I know what are the, are the relative position of around a, one particle of two neighbor particles Q and R at the current configuration. So now what I know is the angle theta, the final angle. And I wonder what was the relative angle of these particles at the original, co at the original uh, configuration. So I want now to compute capital theta. Well, I can do a relatively parallel derivation and just pr start from the dot product, the scalar product of these two vector, differential of x1, differential of x2, which is the modulus times the cosinus of the angle I want to compute. Then I reproduce the same procedure similar of what we did before, replace the formulas we know, and after all that, I arrive to that formula. That formula that says that the, final, the original angle formed by two particles at the reference configuration, from which I know the current position at the present time, so from which I know the, sorry, I, which I know the positions T1 and T2, the vectors T1 and T2, can be computed by these operations. By the way, look, they are not the same than before. Here there is a minus, a, a plus, and, 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 and that is, there is a minus here, not the same. But there is a similar formula that in terms of the particle, which provides, inform, that allows knowing the uh, spatial, spatial, small e strain tensor, the two final 
unit vectors defining the directions, and then I can compute the angle. Okay? So, finally, what is the, con the, con the, the, the conclusion of that? In fact, in these two fundamental measures of a strain that we have derived, one for the material description, or one in the, for the material configuration, the other in terms of the material spatial configuration, there, are, there is information about variations of distances around a particle and variations of angles around a particle. Okay? Imagine, imagine that I have a motion, a movement, and I have two particles. Okay? Not only two particles. Imagine that I have all particles in this segment, which is made by particles, this would be, by analogy to a, a, a material surface, that would be a material segment. A segment which is made always by particles. So all particles in this segment are the reference configuration, starting from particle A and ending from particle B. Okay? So there is a motion, there is a certain equation of motion, and then at a certain time, in which I am interested, for instance, at t equal to, I know it's, it's, it's told that the particle A moves to that position, small a, 0, 0, 0. And particle B moves to that position, 1, 1, 1. And the remaining particles now are form a straight segment, that straight segment. Okay? By the way, would you be able to compute the length of this segment? Relatively easy, right? Doing just an algebra operation. But would you be able to compute that length? You even don't know the equation. Okay? You don't know the equation. But you are given an information. The information that you are given this time is the Almansi, the spatial strain tensor. Look, it's a symmetric tensor, you see? Symmetric tensor. Okay? <coughs> Depends on the spatial coordinates, small z, for instance, and of course varies a long time. And now you are requested to give us what is the original length of this segment. Look, you don't know the position, the equation of this segment, but you are requested to give the length. Can you? Well, let's do some simple algebra. So, by the way, if I wanted to compute that length, what I would do? I would do an integral. I would sum all the length differential of small capital S, and I would sum along all this line, okay? So conceptually, I would express that, say, okay, the length that I'm requested is the integral, the curvilinear integral, from point A to point B of the differential of length. The point of computing that is that I don't know this curve. I cannot integrate in that, okay? So let's do a little trick. Let's replace here the formula for the stretch. If I use the formula for the stretch, I know that this length, every of this length, this, this differential segment, after the formation, is transformed in a certain differential segment here, differential of small s. And I know that the length of these two segments are related by one measure that we have derived. Which one? Stretch or unit elongation. Anyway, is the one that relates segments that before and after the length of segments, before and after the formation. So I just replace <coughs> differential of capital S by differential of small s divided by lambda. So now that integral transform on 1 over lambda, which by the way depends on what now? Lambda depends on the point I'm dealing with, differential of s. And look, what I've done, this is sort of, so to speak, change of variable. Remember what you did? integrals that you did change of variables, you have changed differential of s, which typically is given in terms of the capital X, by differential of a small s, which now is, the, is given in terms of a small, a, 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 a small x. So now the domain of integration is no longer from this to this. The integration interval is from that point to that point. Okay? But now, now, in that case, what is the difference with before? You know the equation of that. It's very simple. So now what you have to do is just compute at every point of that the lambda, 
and do the integration. So that's the concept of the problem. Now, let's ap apply the formulas. We go to the formula, we go to lambda. What is the application of lambda? Okay, lambda, just derive that, is 1 divided by square root 1 minus 2 to plus lambda. <coughs> let's do it. Okay, we are dealing with that vector, t. What is the vector going from point A to point B having unit modulus? It's a vector whose component is 1, 1, 1, and the modulus, in order to, give, to, to keep it the unit modulus, just derived by the norm, which is the square root of 3. So this is that vector. Okay, I replace it here. I replace it here. Okay? So, uh, lambda. Now I replace t, e t, and I go back there. I replace in that the operation multiply this tensor by that vector, that vector, right hand side and left hand side. I do the operation and I obtain that lambda minus 1 is precisely a square root of 1 plus 2 th thirds of t e t. That just comes from doing this operation. Multiply that tensor times the right and times the left doing that, 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 that the standard operations by that, that vector, which is the one defined in the final direction. So finally, in a quite trivial, as I was supposed, the, the stretch in every point of this point here is informed, is, that information is in here. So I should be able to obtain, by doing that simple operation of that operation to compute the, the, the stretch and the inverse of the stretch, which is this, okay? So now I have that, I just replace in here. And now I have that the length I am obtained, I am requested, by the way, sorry, sorry. First, this, I have to specify, I have to specify for this specific time. This is time equal to, so this is the expression of the, of the stretch for every time, now I have to specify here for this specific time. 2 is t is equal to. So that's what I do here. And then I obtain that the inverse of the stretch at every point of this configuration at time 2 is just this single formula. By the way, it's constant. No, it doesn't depend on x. That's typically what we look when we establish these problems. We don't want you to lose time doing complex mathematical operations. So we, you, you just make it easy for you. So anyway, that's a constant. So I have to integrate the, that magnitude, put that into here, integrate. Since this is constant, this gets out from the integral, and I obtain the integration of the differential of length, differential of s, from this point to that point. What is that, by the way? Is the length of this segment. The integration of the length, the sum of the lengths along and between point 0.1 and point one, one, point 0.0 and point 0.1 is the length, which is the square root of the length. So multiplying that by that, I obtain the final length. See? I mean, conceptually very simple. I should be able to do it. If I know the equation, if I'm able to work, I know the equation of the segment at one configuration, by using the concept of a stretch, which is computed in terms of the measure of strains, I should be able to compute the length of any segment, even if it's not a straight, even if it's curvilinear, at any other time, in any other config configuration. 